I'm probably the most unpolished guy you'll ever meet in your life. And I'm okay with that. Because it's through intimacy is where reproduction takes place. Not intercourse. I want you to hear me on this. When God is in the garden with Adam, he begins to tell him what? I give you dominion. I set you in a place. You want to know what some of our biggest problem is? Of why we don't see reproduction? Is because we are not taking place in a dominion in a garden that God put us in. We're too worried about everybody else's garden. We get so distracted at looking what everybody else has going on that we don't see what is right in front of us. And that was the biggest problem with Adam and Eve. They looked upon something they were never supposed to look upon. And as we stand in our culture, we can preach it from the pulpits. We can talk about it. We can gossip about it. We can get mad about it. But are we going to own it and do something about it? And owning it and do something about it is not having another program. It's not putting another church down the street. What is happening is is we have to come into the place of intimacy and quit looking for intercourse. Because in intercourse, you have a finish line. That's as pure as I can get in this room. And I want to just I want to just nudge up against the perversion that's in this territory. I want to nudge right up against it. I want to nudge up against perverted thoughts. I want to go nudge up against perverted motives. I want to nudge right up against a perversion which is a twisting of the truth. You know what's perverted is so perverted is that Jesus' greatest move of discipleship and leadership. And man, I love leadership. I'm a John Maxwell guy. But I'm going to tell you right now, you know what I found out more than anything? Leadership is not influence, nothing more than nothing less. Leadership is love. Nothing more, nothing less. He found 12 good old boys. And you know what he did? He made them fall in love with them. But our agendas are too perverted for us to make people fall in love with us. And I'm just going to get real. We have fell in love with each other. And I can say that in a non-perverted sense. I would die for Matt Petrie. If you tried to harm that boy, you'd have to come through all every bit of five foot seven, 200 pounds. You'd have to come through every bit of it. You'd have to take my life before you took his life. So what we have been perverted in revival is we could tell you where Brownsville started and we could tell you where it ended. It was intercourse. It was give me something that makes me feel good. It's a finish line of intercourse. When if you ever taste intimacy, it lasts forever. And intimacy, you don't have to push. I've never known anybody to get raped in intimacy. But I've known a whole lot of people to get raped and abused in intercourse. Nobody has ever been raped in intimacy. You want to know what happens when you get bound in religion? You're getting raped. Your purity is getting ripped from you. (laughs) My mom was raped by her dad, her grandfather, her cousins in the hills of Virginia. You want to know what? I was never raped. That thing died with my mom. You want to know how it died? I believe this is where the curse got broken. First it got broken on the cross, but you want to know where I think it got broken next? When I was 10 years old, I learned how to play drums. And you want to know how I learned how to play drums at? I learned how to play drums at my cousin's church. I love when my mom tells this testimony. The man that was pastoring the church that I wanted to go to so bad. Mom, I want to go to Ernie's church. I want to go to Ernie's church. 
My mom didn't want to step nowhere foot in that church. You want to know why? Because when she was younger, there was one of the cousins that raped her. And she took everything inside of her and forgave him and forgave herself. That's where I got saved. That's where I first tasted the Holy Ghost. How far are you willing to go to not look for intercourse tonight? Self-pleasure. Finish line. Can we say that we've come through the gate? I thank God that this church was the gate that we came through. But now, as a region, will we build a throne? Nowhere in the Bible does it tell us to build churches. It tells us to claim territory. Will we get so intimate that we'll leave the place of the gate? It's the bayou, right? If you don't watch it, you'll stand at the gate and you'll miss the fact that he just walked right by you. You'll miss it. You'll miss it that he just walked right by you and he's not here for a visitation he wants to abide in Baton Rouge and he does not want a starting point I'm going to say it like this you three boys that we've been meeting with you remind me so much of the DNA of overtaken we have seen miracle after miracle in Ohio we've seen the dead raised Heroin addict died 10 times, six times on the way to the hospital, four times on the ER bed. Doctor comes in, says there's nothing else we can do. 40 men laid in an ER and watch the doctor tell a mother, there's nothing else we can do. I got up without any permission from a man and walked straight into the ER room, laid my hands on his chest and said one simple prayer, you shall live and not die. And his heart came alive. wasn't birth from intercourse that was birth from a bunch of people that went from praying in a house to praying in a barn to now we're in a gym that we do whatever we want you want to know why because we're not worried about our lights ain't got none we ain't worried about our smoke ain't got none but we've got a wall I'm not saying this to brag We've got a a war room before the movie came out. Before the movie came out, there were people day and night getting in a classroom, writing family members on the wall, writing pictures. There's victory of hepatitis C, fibromyalgia. When he called it out tonight, I could have just ran circles around the room. Because I remember two years ago when a teenage girl was told she'll never play softball again because that's the disease she had. She walked into a little farm pond, got baptized, went back to the doctor. They said, don't come back for six months. Couldn't explain it. Six months later, she comes back. They couldn't explain it again. There was no trace of that disease. So how many of you are tired of being abused by religion? How many of you are tired of your purity and your intimacy being ripped from you because you're looking for a starting point and a finish point? And you get in this place to pursue where there's strife, where there's frustration. There's no fulfillment. There's no fulfillment. It's not. No fulfillment. How many of us will really be real in this place? Just be real with yourself. I'll tell you how to examine it. When's the last time you just stopped somebody in public 
I said, hey, can I pray for you? When's the last time you just wrapped your arms around a stranger and begin to love on them? You're missing out on some of the greatest intimacy. I told my leaders two days ago, I said, fall in love with Jesus and fall in love with people and we'll be all right. We'll be all right. And if we stay before the face of God like a Zadok priest and not a Levitical priest, you know what a Levitical priest is? He's the one that listens to the complaints of the people. There's that rape again. Make sure you satisfy the people. A Zadok priest will get before the face of God. He'll look into the eyes of fire and say, God, what do you want? And then he'll turn to the people and say, this is where we're going. I'm a military guy. I really don't have a lot of worries about how the platoon feels. I know what they're capable of. I know what overtaking is capable of. So I am there not to please them. But I'm there to please the heart of the Father. Because I'm in intimacy with Him. And you want to know what? He's never stirred us wrong. He's never stirred us wrong. I want to mess with your mind a little bit. And your theology. You want to know where we really started our church? Monday nights in a bar. Monday nights we would gather in a bar two and a half years ago. They had no business on Monday nights. It was the biggest concert venue in our county. I coached football for the owner's son. And I said, I noticed that you have no business. So you know what we would go in there and do? This. This. And we watched waitresses give up crack pipes. trying to figure out how to sustain this thing what's happened in the last day and a half inside the four walls of this building you've missed every bit of it if you think we're here to grow a church you missed every bit of it you missed every bit of it Adam's reproduction and dominion was given to him because of one thing you know what that was Intimacy with the Lord. What have you searched after in your Christian walk? Intimacy or intercourse? Have you been pushing or pursuing? I want to do this. Brother Matt, if you'll come on the stage in the circuit riders. Jared, I want you and your two buddies to come here. We're going to do this. And if we go further in this thing, we'll go further in this. I'm not very good at polished things. I just say it like it is. That's just how I do it. Because God takes ordinary men to do extraordinary things that are willing to be irregulars that are willing to run with a small tribe that are willing to chase the cloud and not the crowd willing to obey orders at all cost on earth as it is in heaven we declare that you're a three band cord that will not be easily broken And I say your intimacy as sons. Your intimacy as sons. You ain't looked for titles. You've not looked for fame. You've not even looked for a church to go move this thing into. All you've looked to be is sons. You hear the sound of the wind. You hear the sound of the whispers that nobody else hears. 
You hear the sounds of the whispers that nobody else hears. That's what I heard over northern Ohio. And you hear it over Baton Rouge. What other men have forfeited. You hear the whispers of the sounds of Almighty Yahweh. And it's birthed inside of you. So we say today is your inauguration. Today we commission you. This day, we commission you as the restorers of the breach of the streets that you dwell in. And we declare the keys of the kingdom. We declare the keys of the kingdom over you. And we say there will be reproduction. You will be fruitful and multiply, not because of your preaching, not because of the worship, but because of your intimacy, Adam, with Yahweh, your intimacy to walk with Him in the cool of the day. You're not interested in church services. You're not interested in smoke and lights, but you're interested in Him. In the heart of the Father, I declare you're the tip of the spear. In the heart of the Father be placed. And we anoint you young men today. Stretch your hands this way, church. We anoint them and commission them right now in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. Sons. Sons of a remnant. Sons of a remnant called for a time such as this. Hear and obey. Hear and obey. In the name of Jesus. Hear and obey. God, let a fire inside of them that will not be put out by a man. God, I declare the fire and the anointing of a third great awakening. Hear the sound of heaven. Hear the sound of heaven. I call forth a pastor's mantle on you and an apostolic assignment in the name of Jesus. I declare an apostolic assignment over Baton Rouge in the name of Jesus. May you drip with oil as you walk the streets of Baton Rouge. May you drip with oil. And may you smell like heaven. May you release a fragrance. We declare the feet of a pioneer. God, we declare the feet of a pioneer. We declare the feet of a pioneer. Get ready to follow a Zadok priesthood anointing. Because that Zadok priesthood anointing took us into a bar. And we started seeing people get saved and marriages get restored. And you want to know what happened? One Sunday morning, here come in, Chef Bill walked right into the church. He didn't shake hands with anybody. He didn't do anything but walk straight to the altar and get down on his knees and give his life to Jesus. And his wife got saved. And every one of his kids got saved. And they shut down the biggest bar in our county. time to the church not be paralyzed anymore you want to know what paralyzes people only two things an injury to your mind and an injury to your back and I declare that God is restoring Baton Rouge to its right mind I declare God is putting a backbone inside Baton Rouge that we're going to go after the lost and we're going to seek the heart of an almighty God I want everybody to close their eyes in the room. If you're in this altar area, I want you to just take a step back. Just take take three steps back. How many of us want to be commissioned in this? 
The most addictive thing in my life is His presence and His glory. It's a love for God. But you know what I want to I love more than that? Is when God captures the hearts of no names and no faces. And they start to get experience the intimacy that I know. I love when marriages get restored. I love when people get healed. But I'm going to tell you right now, the funnest thing that I love is when people are texting me with revelation. How many of you, I'm telling you, I heard this earlier. And I was waiting for Mark to call it out. But I'm telling you, there are multiple people in this room. The reason you struggle with perversion in this region is because of rape and abuse. And if you want the cycle to stop in your family, come to this altar. Find rest. Find peace. If you're tired of being raped by religion, You don't have that fulfillment in your walk with the Lord. Just you and Him. I want you to come to this altar. Just cry out to God. Just cry out to God. If you want fulfillment with Him, this is the greatest altar call we could have all weekend. Is it not, gentlemen? Fulfillment with the heart of Yahweh. Come. Come. Come, 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 come. Taking off that religious mask. And I'm just going to be secure in who I am. The greatest part of Genesis, you'll find revival all over Genesis. And I love this part. Adam, where are you? Not Adam, where are you, but this. Adam, where are you? Where are you, Adam? Where are you? Not where are you in your pornography. Not where are you in your gossip and your hurt and your frustration and your depression and your insecurity. All he wanted was his son. That's all he wanted. Intimacy. He never wanted to lose intimacy with Adam. Because he knew when intimacy was lost, then dominion would be lost. And there would be no reproduction. Which means there would be no fruit. And now he's just looking for us to come get in him. You heard me say it last night. There was a man that came to me this afternoon. Said that that word I gave last night was for him. Said it had been forever since he had slept through the night. And last night he slept like a baby. Who else is still out there? Who else? He said, I've come to give you life and give it to you more abundantly. Life, life, life. I've been watching this young lady all night long. I've been watching you, daughter. You struggle with identity. Adam, where are you? I declare no longer looking in the mirror and wishing you were somebody else. Who else has done that? Abraham Lincoln said he loves that a man is born an original, but 90% of them when they die become a copy. God just wants you. God wants you. And if you want the real God and want to know the real you, just come and meet Him. Come and meet Him. Come and meet Him. Because I'm going to tell you right now, you want to know the greatest church girth program? Pastors, leaders? Be the real you. Be the real you. 
We've baptized hundreds in two years. I'm not a theologian. Matt will tell you that. <laughs> I'm not a theologian. But I have intimacy. And because I have intimacy and my wife has intimacy with the Lord, we have intimacy with each other. And it's producing something that the Lord has blinded me to for the last two years. And now I'm just able to see. Even the way I viewed my brothers this weekend has been different. It's been different. There's moments where I've ran with these guys and say, I don't fit in. But I'm a piece of this puzzle. Our apostle tells us, each expression is different, but the language is the same. That's why I love the theology. His theology has changed my life, changed my prayer life. His theology has changed my prayer life. What are the people around you feeding into your life? You three have something so special. You know what that is? It's family. You can't teach that in a class. You fell in love with one another. Most importantly, you fell in love with a God that is crazy in love with you. And because you fell in crazy love with God, you're able to love a man in purity. And it's going to produce something throughout this region that's been perverted for far too long because there is no agenda to it. There is no agenda to it. And God's going to put spiritual authority around you to protect your purity. You want to know why I can say that? Because He did it for me. There was a time, brother, I'd let anybody in my pulpit. I love everybody. I trust everybody. This guy's been yelling at me for a year. But that kind of purity and that kind of love, it rescues heroin addicts. It rescues the drug addicted off the street and they find that pure love and they don't have to go through a 12 step program they have a one step program in an intimacy and a presence that's produced out of a love the greatest thing we can do is have less church services and more prayer meetings and I can't talk you into that I'm sorry. If anybody ever came to me and say, what do you think some of the success is behind your church growth? We have 30 prayer meetings a week, a month, and eight church services. There's a group of people in northern Ohio that come from all different walks of life, and they truly, genuinely love one another. They pray together. They break bread together. They do things together. And you want to know what? I don't isolate myself as the pastor. I'm right in the middle of it. That's dangerous. It's not when you're dead. You can't get stabbed in the back when you're dead. You can't. Are there some days it hurts? Absolutely. You want to know why? Because you fall in love with people. And that's awesome. It's awesome. It's awesome to be with them through their struggles. But it's even greater in their victories. It's even greater in their victories. I don't really know where to go from here. I'm in a swirl, man. I'm just in a swirl. Will we take a vow to build a throne? Will we take a vow to build a throne in this region of prayer and worship? Matt, will you just commission them in this? Building a throne of prayer and worship. 
Jesus, we thank you that you gave us that governmental prayer. Our Father, our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom, your government. We ask for your leadership to dismantle every other inferior leader, Lord, in Jesus' name that is not of the kingdom. Everything of darkness, I believe for you to dismantle. And Father, for you to raise up night and day adoration of the man Christ Jesus in Baton Rouge. I hear the Lord calling for the sound of Louisiana. I want heaven to smell like Louisiana's incense. We're thankful for the sound that has risen from different places across the earth. But the Lord is calling for the incense of this region to begin to fill heaven's prayer bowls. And the Lord is going to mingle the incense with fire. And He's going to overturn the the bowls of prayer in heaven and pour out fire. We call for fire. We call for fire on youth groups. Fire on schools. Fire on Bible colleges. Let it break out. Let it sweep from one side of the city to the other. Let it break out in the projects. Let it break out, Lord God, across this city. We ask God for those who would build you a resting place. God, begin to raise them up in this hour. Begin to shift and move them in position to see your kingdom come. We call for your kingdom to come on earth as it is in heaven. We call for your government to come on earth as it is in heaven. Begin to strengthen pastors with might. Begin to strengthen worship teams with might. Begin to strengthen intercessors with might. We call you into the new day. We call you to war differently. We call you to a seat of peace and release a sword from your mouth and watch Yahweh do battle on your behalf. Newspapers will carry the reports of what you release in governmental intercession. And I'm not seeing it happen with 500 people in a morning prayer meeting. I see it happening in two or three. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, there I am in the midst of them. You want to know what Jesus calls a governmental ecclesia? It's two or three gathered together in His name. And I'd rather be with two or three that are really gathering in Him than with 500 people who don't really want to be there. It is the day of the small remnant that can shift the course of history. God's never needed a remnant. Never needed a majority. He's always needed a remnant. We call for the great cloud of witnesses. We call right now for our ears to be open to hear counsel in heaven. We we release you into encounter. We release you to hear words unlawful to repeat. We release you to come up here. Oh, Father, we're asking for for your help. We're asking for your help. We're asking for your help. God, raise up a movement across this region of the low man, of humility, of those who are not going to lend their strength to programs. We've tried it, and it did not change anything. We need you, Lord. We need you to come down and evangelize America. We ask God, listen, saints, God can turn a whole nation by himself in a day. What happens when God comes down and evangelizes? 
What happens when God comes down and evangelizes? I'm telling you, I've, I've had him evangelize me. I was running, sitting on a bar stool, and the word of knowledge would come to me. I didn't have a man evangelizing me, but he, his Holy Spirit would chase me down because there was a praying mama in my house saying, God, save my son. Come on. Come on, begin to release angels. Come on, begin to release intercession. Begin to release incense over this region. Come on, you don't need a microphone to change nations. All you need is an alabaster box. Break that thing open and pour it upon the Son of God and let that fragrance fill the room. Let it fill the room. I don't need my voice to fill the room. I need my incense to fill the room. We call for those three Hebrew boys that refused to bow to an idol. We call for those three Hebrew boys that refused to bow in Babylon. They refused to bow to Jezebel. I see a fiery furnace prepared for you three. Did I not throw three in the furnace? But how is it that there is a fourth man in the fiery furnace with them? Come on, we're in the age of peace. I'm not talking about a bad fire here. I'm talking about an upper room fire. That the king of Israel is throwing you three in the fiery furnace. It's not a furnace of affliction. We don't do those anymore. There's a fourth man in the fire with you. We don't care what they say. We will honor regardless of what we're, what is said about us. I've heard a different sound. I don't know much about these guys' lives, but I feel like they are good, they are being mantled tonight with something that that religion won't understand. But those in darkness will say yes and amen to. It's what I've been waiting for all my life. Come on, that's all over. That's all over Baton Rouge. There is a uniqueness on this city, unlike any other city I've been in. God wants to release the strange and unusual in this region. God wants to release the strange and unusual to shock the wisdom of the wise. I hear the Lord doing things in strange and unusual places that He has reserved in pockets of light. Little places here and there that He has reserved. Strange and unusual. Manifestation of the, of the kingdom. And I hear the Lord calling out to the Father and saying thank you. That you have hidden this from the worldly wise. And you have preserved it for the simple, hungry, holy heart. Come on. Come on, how many have experienced, how many of you have ever been in the furnace of affliction, but you found the fourth man there in the fire, unlike any other way you would have found him? There was things you learned about him in that fire of affliction, and you look back at that thing and said, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, I would have stumbled and fell. If I had not gone through that wilderness, if I had not gone through that time, I wouldn't know him like I do. But I can stand here today If 
Father, we thank you. You say, by what authority are you doing this? Hey, man, if it's not for you, it's not for you. I'm speaking to the people that is of this. And if it, I'm not, I don't mean that disrespectfully, but it may not be for you. That's okay. Father, we receive a circuit rider movement. Father, don't leave us out. Mantle us fresh, God, for this nation. I'm asking you, God, deal with my heart. I don't like to travel. I want to stay home. God, deal with my heart. Mantle me afresh, God. Mantle me afresh, Father, today. Mantle us. Mantle us, mantle our families again. Mantle my baby, mantle my daughter to see what's on daddy and for daddy to see what's on me, a Petri. God, mantle Petrina Petri. Mantle us, God, right now. I'm not leaving tonight until I sense you wrap my, wrap my face in the mantle of your name. Wrap my face in the mantle of your name. Come on. Come on, Elisha. Hiding in that cave. You're on the mountain hiding in the cave. You thought he would come in the wind. And the Lord wasn't in the wind. You thought he would come in the shaking. But he wasn't in the shaking. And Elisha wrapped his face in his mantle. And walked out in the secret place. Depending on the spirit of the Lord to lead him. And he heard the whispers. He heard the still small voice again. Come on. Father, wrap my face in the mantle of your name. I want fresh revelation of who you are. I want to know you. I want to know you. Take me back to the dorm room, 1998, where I had one prayer. I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. God, raise up a whole movement in this region of people who have no other desire. But I want to know you. I want to know you. I want to know you. I don't want to be awesome. I want to find him who is awesome. I give up on my awesomeness. I say, Lord, rescue me from the disease of religion. Rescue me, Lord. Rescue me, Lord. God, I ask from Baton Rouge that you would launch a new seeker-sensitive movement. But from heaven's perspective, True seekers, true seekers who do, want nothing but to seek your face. I'm telling you, saints, Jesus wasn't seeker sensitive. You show me one Bible verse where he was. Come on, saints. He spoke to the religious crowd with such thunder and such conviction in his heart. And he would tell people strange things and they would run off and he didn't even care. Search the Gospels. Find the one who knows his father. Find the one who says, come, follow me. Oh, man. Come on, saints. Come on, saints. We're aliens. We're aliens on this planet. Strangers. Royal royal priesthood, we like that. Holy nation, we like that. But a peculiar people. God for 1997 I begged God for a year to lift drug and alcohol addiction off my life running from God Jasper, Texas look up at the stars every night God please deliver me from drug and alcohol addiction I drain the keg sit there until 3 o'clock in the morning I'd be the last one by the keg please God set me free please Lord if you really care about me, say, all oh, saints. I ended up in the belly of the well, three days and three nights in the Jasper County Jail. <laughs> and a man who attempted murder the night before walked up to me and started evangelizing me. I know, a thing, I know we think we got to go through some evangelistic program before we start loving people, but this dude had attempted murder the night before, and he's, he's given me the gospel. 
And he said, I'm, the phone's going to ring. And we're in Texas. They do the death penalty. He had attempted murder the night before. He said, I don't know if I'm going to get the death penalty or if I'm just going to spend the rest of my life in prison. My chance is over. He said, but you have another chance. You have another chance. And it pierced my heart. And, and God instantly set me free from every lesser fascination and every lesser desire. I didn't have to go through 12 steps. I know some people do. I'm not knocking that. That's not my story. I got out of there and instantly started going after God. And the I thought everybody was on fire. And little did I know. There is a remnant within the so-called remnant. And all I wanted to do was pray night and day. I wanted to hide. I wanted to know Him. And everybody told me, it don't take all that. It don't take all that. Saints, I didn't need somebody right then just to give me some kind of just pat on the back. I needed power. I needed to talk to a father who could say, Son, it's okay to spend four hours praying in tongues. Oh, that's weird. Is that weird? I think being on Facebook for four hours is weird. We need a do. We need a revolution. We need a revolution. We need some fathers to climb the hill of the Lord and encounter the burning bush again. Haven't had a drink since 1997. Haven't smoked a joint since 1997. Haven't done a line of cocaine since 1997. And I have a superior addiction. His name is Yeshua. Come on. Lord, raise up a Yeshua movement. A Jesus movement from Baton Rouge. We care nothing about the program. We want the presence. We want the glory. Somebody shout. Come on, raise up a rumble. Raise up a rumble that shakes the heavens. There is a sound. Oh. Come on, somebody shout. Somebody shout for me. Somebody thank God. on if you have a similar story the Lord is commissioning you tonight it's time to go get somebody out come on find his eyes of fire again tonight come on I want to know you I want to know you